What's going on everybody? It's your favorite Auntie Mo and I am back for another episode review of Love After Lockup. This is season two, episodes 38 and 39, Takana Khan and Wedding Crashers and Cheaters. Before we get into the review, a couple of real quick church announcements. First and foremost, I do not feel good. So I got my tea on deck. Ain't no wine in this review today. <laughs> but I'm still going to try to make this review as entertaining for y'all as possible as I can, okay? Um, if you haven't subscribed to my channel just yet, go ahead and subscribe to my channel. Also, let me know what you think about this video. Don't leave without letting me know what you think about this video, okay? Give me a thumbs up or a thumbs down. And then make sure that your notifications are turned on so that you will know whenever I upload new content, okay? Um, also another quick church announcement. If you're not following me on my socials, please do so. I'm on Instagram, Moyo512. I'm on Twitter, NikkiShawn512. And I have a Facebook page that is dedicated to this channel, Mohambone TV on Facebook that you can find me on. Okay. Um, this was the season finale to Love After Lockup. <laughs> Finally, with 39 goddamn episodes, this was really season two and three put in one but somebody at wt was lazy as hell they was like fuck this shit i ain't got time for all this we just gonna make one big ass season now look here when y'all come back with um uh, what is that life after lockup this better be a whole new goddamn this better be season three don't come to me with no season two shit no we need to leave well enough alone and pick up where it left off okay so hopefully y'all are ready for the review because this episode was good. If y'all see me looking off to my left a lot, my left, your right, it's because I made some notes. Because again, I'm not feeling good at all, y'all. It's it's that season. Yes, I did get the damn flu shot. Do I feel like I've been the flu? Yes, I do. I've had it many a times. I can tell when it's coming on and I'm already stocking up on the goddamn, y'all. I could go on and on, but I'm not even gonna do it. So hopefully y'all are ready for this review because I'm ready to give it to you. So let's get right on up into it. All right, we TB. We're gonna start with Andrea and Lamandra, aka Goldie. Cause what they y'all can even put them in the last episode. Y'all couldn't put them in the season finale. You had two of them motherfuckers. <laughs> 38 or 39. Y'all couldn't get a snippet. We already know that Goldie is still in jail. Yes, we already know that, but dang. Is Andrea out here selling glasses still? Is she fucking on a scamming ass rich ass nigga? Like, what is she doing? Can we get a little bit of update about little mama? Let, let us know what's going on with her. That's messed up. I say, damn. They couldn't even put a little snippet about her. Let us know what's going on. So hopefully she can show up in life after lockup or something like that. Because it's like, damn, we TV. Only niggas on there. We couldn't even get a goddamn finale, you know, but, you know, it is what it is. Moving on from now. All right, y'all. So, next up, we have Amber and Vincent. So, Amber waking up. She on her way to go. She's at Puppy Mama house still where she living at, her mother-in-law house. She on her way to go see Vincent at the gym. She says she got to talk to Vincent because it's just a lot going on within their relationship. She's sick of the shit, and she want to be over and done with it, right? Now, at the same time, Vincent is at the gym getting his mercenary work on. You know, he killed people for a living. So he out there getting ready for the next phone call for the next hit. <laughs> when the good fellas call him or whatever, he getting ready to go ride out on bitch. So at the same time, he at the gym and he's reflecting. He's hoping that the time that he spent with her at the family reunion with her people made a positive impact on her. And hopefully that can help their relationship. I said, oh, God damn, poor little Ting Ting. So when she gets in there, you know, automatically she's like, look here, I just don't think this is what me and you is going to work. Like this whole situation and what we thought it was going to be. It's real awkward. I thought it was going to be this way. I thought it was going to be that way. Now, her argument ain't making sense to him because in his mind, he's thinking, you know what? I thought it was going to work because when you was locked up, like you were talking about how much you love me, how much you were ready to get married to me. And he was like, yeah, I do admit I shouldn't have asked you to marry me so quick off top. But you said yes. You were still saying that you love me. You had all these plans with me. We had all these, you know, sexual chemistry when we were talking on the phone and said the other than we get out. And you the one that's hesitant. Like, I'm gung-ho. I'm all in. You the one that don't want to do it. She like, well, it's just awkward. And I didn't think things were going to be the way it was. He steady saying that he want to work it out. He feel like there's something between them. She's like, no. 
I'm not with it. I can't do it. Because Amber's whole thing is she don't want to go back to prison. She wants to be on the straight and narrow. She want to do her, you know, be a regular working member of society. And the thing is, she really don't want to use Vincent no more. Really, because she sees she can't do that goddamn shit. She said he got out. Well, he thinking that he going to con a con. But really, I've been doing this shit for a living, baby. Yes, we know you've been doing this shit for a living. But I am glad that she wants to turn over a new leaf. She don't want to do that same old bullshit no more, right? So finally, ultimately, she tells him, like, look here. This ain't gonna work, you know, you can go, it is what it is. So child, he get in his car, nice ass car that he had too. And you know, he did, so I hope he don't come back and try to do nothing stupid to her ass cause that's gonna be real messed up. So Puppy ends up calling Amber and Amber tells Puppy that she um, she ended up breaking up with Vincent. She couldn't do it no damn more. She don't wanna talk to him. She don't wanna do nothing with him. Now at first it seemed like Puppy was a little pissed off. She was like, dang, you just gave up on our future like that. Amber's like, no, look here. You're going to get out in two months. We're going to work. We're going to do what we got to do so we can get out here. We can get this money the legal way. I'm not going to use nobody. You're not going to use no damn body, right? Now, puppy, puppy petty as hell. She's like, well, what if I want to call my father and check on my father, see how my father doing? I said, puppy, you petty as hell for that because you know Vincent did adopt her ass. Y'all still need to get that shit work out, girl. You need to go ahead and emancipate yourself so you ain't got to be <laughs> no longer tied to your daddy like that. That's fucked up fucked up but amber finally does admit that no matter where her or puppy are in the world that puppy always is going to hold a special part in her life that she loves puppy and puppy is her future which we all knew in the first damn place it's like damn you couldn't say that in the beginning you had to stretch it out this whole damn time with this man child on the update they say um she working at a restaurant. She's still living at puppy mama house. Of course, <laughs> that's her mother-in-law. She ain't going no damn where. Vincent, this motherfucker dating a chick in the Philippines, and he said he can't wait to meet up with her. So basically, he going from We TV to TLC. He trying to be on 90 Day Goddamn Fiance or something. Now let him be on that. Our damn show will review that goddamn show then. Because we already know how hell, uh, how crazy as hell Vincent is. Let his ass be on 90 Day Fiance. I damn sure will be reviewing that shit. So next up, y'all, we got Lizzie and Daniel. So Lizzie is with her sister and her mom. They're out dress shopping, right? Now, they're supposed to be getting married in a few months. I don't know how soon it is, but it's supposed to be soon as hell. She ends up finding a dress that she wants that is $715 damn dollars. Her sister's like, hold on, slow your roll, pump your brakes. Why you got to get the dress now? Why y'all got to get married so soon? Like, bitches, you're married? Like, what's, I mean, is you pregnant? Like, what the hell is going on? Lizzie's like, no, but, you know, me and Daniel made these plans when he was locked up that this is what we going to do. Child, ultimately, this damn heifer ends up buying this dress. She tried on other dresses, but she really didn't like it. She ends up buying this damn dress. For $715. When she could have took her goddamn ass to David's Bridal. <laughs> Shout out to David's Bridal. I got my damn wedding dress there. And it was bomb as hell. And what, what I did with my dress. I ended up getting it uh, two sizes too big. And took it to a tailor. So they could custom fit it to me. Oh baby she was on top of that. And I only spent. How much did I spend for my dress? $120. Here we are. Damn near nine years later. <laughs> we Still together, hello. But um, she ends up buying that damn dress. Now her sister's trying to tell her, like, you need to slow down and pump your damn brakes. Cause mind you, she's telling them that Daniel ain't put in no money towards this wedding. She wants to have, have this big, nice, extravagant wedding, but Daniel ain't put in no money. He ain't put forth no effort to do nothing with the goddamn wedding. You wanna know why? Daniel too busy with his homeboy doing some old jackass white boy shit mountain grocery carts to the top of cars. I'm like, are you fucking serious? So him and his homeboy end up going over to his aunt's house. Now his aunt is the one that, um, <clears throat> if you remember a couple of episodes back when he first got out of jail, they had this, you know, welcome home party for him, right? <clears throat> Y'all, I'm sorry. I'm not lying. I do not feel good. Hold on. Y'all pray for your auntie now. But they had this welcome home party for him at his aunt's house. And his aunt had called him out about stealing um, his uncle's crossbow. Well, that aunt, he wants to go to his aunt's house because he wants to buy this car from her. $7,500 for this damn car, right? Now, apparently, he's been working. He's been out of jail for 10 weeks. He has been saving up money 
to buy this damn car and ain't said nothing to Lizzie about it. Now, his homeboy and even his aunt was like, ain't you supposed to be getting married? Are you going to put this money towards your wedding? Like, how are you going to be able to do this? This fool Daniel going to say if the woman I'm with has a problem with me spending money on something that I want, then maybe she ain't the one for me. He's claiming that this car is going to help him stay clean and sober because it'll give him something to focus on. I guess apparently he's into mechanics. He likes working on cars, this, that, and the other. Now, I get it if that's something that's really going to help you in your sobriety and shit like that, but if you just got it, out of spite, out of some dumb shit, that I would have an issue with that. Now, he does say that him and Lizzie have two different views on where they're going in life, and especially with their marriage. Because, of course, Lizzie's ready to get married, bing, bang, kum, pow, right away. He wants to slow down, pump your brakes, see where shit is going, because he see that things really ain't working out with them. Now, something else that him and his homeboy was talking about, I kind of picked up on it, but I missed it. He was saying something about, like, since he's got out, he's been stressed out. And you can see he's, like, lost a lot of weight. He look all, like, like sunken in. I hope he ain't doing something. He ain't got no damn business. But um, he ends up going over there to his auntie house. And um, the auntie, again, is asking him if he think he can, afford, he can afford this car and get married. He starts telling his auntie him and Lizzie has issues. Regardless of what, she makes him sign a contract for the car. Because she like, look here, some shit fall through with this car. I'm taking your goddamn ass to court. Because you must have got away with stealing my husband's crossbow. But you ain't finna get away with this goddamn car. I don't blame her for that. Auntie was legit. She was ready to go. Had two contracts made up. One for you, one for him. They both signed it. He drove away in that car. Happy as hell. It was a nice ass car. It looked like it was a sports car though. That car looked like he can get himself in trouble. Like he can be out there speeding and, and racing and all of that shit. Revving up the engine. Scaring old ladies and kids and shit. He don't need that car. That car seemed like it's going to be trouble for his ass. So later on child. She ends up getting to the house. She pulls up. See, his, see him outside with the car. And she like you know okay. Uh, what is this? And he was like uh, it's my car. And she was like okay. How much did you pay for the car? He was like 7500 she was like, so you paid $7,500 for a car that you could have put towards this wedding? He was like, yep, sure did. He was real nonchalant about it. It's kind of like, mm, woman intuition in me says that he had that plan all along. He was ready for her to come in and pop off because he was ready to break up with her anyway. Because he came, like he had an attitude as soon as she got damn got there. Yeah, she did kind of <laughs> snap, but like I said... I can understand it. I know I really don't see it from his point of view. Point of view, no, because his intention and, and all of that, I, I wasn't with it. But then again, Lizzie, you should knew you and that boy, y'all still got to learn each other. This motherfucker just got his ass out of prison. Child, so long story short, they end up arguing. He ends up breaking up with her after she just done spent seven hundred and fifteen dollars on a damn wedding dress. Bitches, you crazy. So after they done arguing, he go up in the house. Lizzie's on camera talking to the producers. Next thing you know, his mama come walking up behind her. Baby, she walks up because this is why his mama end up coming out. Because when they arguing, he says, this is one thing I want from you. I want the ring back. Because she was refusing to get a damn ring back. And it's like he went and saw like, okay, bitch, you don't want to give it to me? I can go give it to my damn mama. Because she was telling him, you didn't pay for it. It was your mama that paid for it. And if your mama want the ring, she can come out here. She can ask me for it and she ain't going to get it back no damn way. That's exactly what happened. Mama came outside, was like, uh, bitch, give me a ring. She was like, no, this was a gift. Technically, she can go and judge Judy with that shit if she wanted to because, yes, yeah, she bought it for Daniel. Daniel gifted it to her. So, it is what it is. Child, Lizzie wasn't giving up the damn ring, and she didn't give up the damn ring. Her and his mama out there arguing. They both kind of walk away. Mama said the one thing that she knew was going to piss goddamn Lizzie off. She called her ass an alcoholic. That word is sensitive to Lizzie. She don't like that. That must have been her past, baby. She don't like that. She don't want to relive that. Bitch, you got me messed up when you say that. Because as soon as she said that, baby, Lizzie ass bent over and picked up a rock and threw a rock at this nigga mama. I said, bitch, did you just throw a rock at this nigga mama? Yeah, she just threw a rock at this nigga mama. Now, mama say the rock hit her foot. Had it hit her up a little bit further, she went over there and dog walked her ass. Now, baby, it's just a mere attempt that made me go over there and clothesline her ass, but baby, she caught an alcoholic and Lizzie didn't like that. <laughs> 
She threw a damn rock at his goddamn mama child. If that ain't some more goddamn ratchet ass shit right there. But she didn't end up giving that damn ring back to her. Later on, she crying. She's sad. And all this whoop de whoop. The updates say that um she's in school. She'll be graduating in four years. I'm like, in four years? She was in school this whole time. Like, what? What's she going to say? She going to school to be a doctor? Like, God damn, you're going to graduate in four years? He was locked up for two. And then you calculate plus two. And then all this time, oh, shit, she got to be in medical school. She's still in school now, going to graduate in four years. I said, okay, God damn. And then we TV, y'all petty as shit. They going to say Daniel got a new girlfriend and his mother really adores her. Y'all petty as hell. Mm-hmm. Y'all, yeah, ooh, Lord. <laughs> Cheryl and Josh, I just can't. So, this is the morning after Cheryl and her sister got into an argument, right? Sister's getting ready to leave. Sister said, I got a whole damn family, husband, kids back at the crib. I need to go back to you. Stay up here and do what you want to do. Matter of fact, how much longer you going to be up here? She's like, I don't know. He got to get the ankle monitor off. And then, you know, a couple of days, a couple of weeks after that, whatever, I'll let you know. Sister's like, girl... You need to get your priorities and shit together. But you know what I'm saying? In the meantime, in between time, don't forget mom and daddy got your kids. And uh, you need to get back to your kids eventually. She's like, I know that. I'm going to do that. I'm just waiting on my man. She's like, all right, cool. Whatever. Sis trying to hip her ass in some goddamn game. But she too busy running behind goddamn Josh ass, right? Now, meanwhile, Josh is at breakfast with his mama, right? Now, <laughs> Josh is telling his mama that he wants to do something special for Cheryl. He wants to take her to the special place and yada, yada, yada. Mama like, uh, fuck you need to take her to the special place for What's so special that you got to tell his bitch you got to take her to a special place for it? He tells her that he wants to propose to her. Mama said, oh, no, hell to the no, to the no, no, no. You propose to her, I'm not going to be at the wedding. I don't want nothing to do with it. Josh like, damn, mama, you ain't going to come to the wedding. He like, hell no. Mama say, you got me and life and bullshit, all that messed up. Mm -mm. I don't mess that girl like that. I ain't coming to the wedding. You should have knew, Dad. You should have knew that Mama don't want nothing to do with Cheryl, nothing that you got going on with Cheryl. She don't want to do with that. So Josh and Cheryl is riding to this little surprise place that he wants to take her right now. The whole time that they riding there, she got a damn attitude. Finally, they show up there, and it's this castle. It's a creepy-ass looking castle, in my opinion, but it's a castle, all the same. So he's got these tour guides that's walking around, showing them everything. Now, they're talking about it being a wedding venue. Talking about this could be, you know, going on here. Your guests could be here. It might be a little bit dark because this, and you know, we don't close it down. So it'll be people through all day, yada, yada, yada. Now, this whole time, Cheryl got a whole attitude and she's steady comparing that castle to the castle that her sister got married in. She's like, well, my sister's castle had this and my sister's castle had that. Bitch, so what? Even the tour ladies, I could see they was over the shit. I one of them on the black bitch. Fuck you and your sister's castle. I don't care. That's what, <laughs> that's what it looked like one of their ass ones. I know one of y'all ass ones goddamn say that. Child, Josh's whole thing is that he wanted to go there. He wanted to show her this. He wanted to do something special. His intentions were to make it official at the castle. Not saying that they had to get married there. He just wanted to propose to her there. But she got this attitude. And so finally, Josh is like, you know what? Forget it. You can leave. I, I, I'm not going to do this. My intentions were to make this official. I was going to propose to you, but you come in here with an attitude. Forget it. I'm done with it. You can leave. She's like, oh, I can done? Girl, you can see the little two, uh, two little uh, tour ladies. They're both like, bitch, girl, let's go because shit going to get crazy up in here. So they quickly exited stage left. Child, when I got down, I'm going to tell you they start arguing up there. Cheryl gets pissed and Cheryl leaves. Now, he was on the balcony. He looked like he was probably getting ready to propose right there because they were out there on the balcony. She was standing this unsafe. I mean, she was just bitching and griping the whole damn time. Finally, child, she gets downstairs and she's at her car, loud as hell, yelling, smoking a cigarette like she was doing when she got into it with her sister the morning before about how he blindsided her with this whack-ass castle and he wasn't going to propose to her. How can he propose when he ain't got no ring because he ain't got no ring because he ain't got no money? Just clowning his ass, going off on his ass. And the producer's like, well, don't you already got a ring? She was like, yeah, not a ring that I bought. This is the ring that I bought. Well, look here. You decide to get yourself in that situation so you ain't got nobody to goddamn blame but yourself. Child, so after she down there, she going off, steady talking about his ass left and right. She hops in the car. She ends up leaving his ass at the damn castle. I'm thinking that it's going to be the end of it right there. 
He's sick of her ass. He's sick of this bullshit. Oh, but no, ma'am. Up, they say they still together and they work things out. I'm like, oh, God. Mama said shit ain't gonna last any dog gonna waste a child. We gonna wait and see what's gonna happen with that. Tony and Angela, y'all. <laughs> All right, y'all. So, Tony been out for one day. He outside fixing on his bike. Angela come outside, bring him a nice little old cold beer to drink, right? Next thing you know, her sister Donna Faye pulls up. Donna Faye come out there and she see that he outside working on a bike. Donna Faye is like, oh man, what you got the bikes out here for? Just what, what the hell is going on? Because her voice is about as deep as Angela's. You know, this is Angela's voice. Donna Faye is just a little bit lighter. <laughs> So Angela says she gave Tony the bike as a gift so he can have some transportation to move around when he get a job this and the other. Donna Faye asked him, well, what, what, do you got a job? He's like, no. That's a damn shame when the two women on there, they voices are deeper than the man voices standing right there next to them. I'd be like, God damn. I'm telling you, I'm sure the sounds of love making between Tony and Angela was National Geographic. I'm sure it sounded like bears up in there, maiden. Oh, no. So they all sitting down and they drinking beer, smoking cigarettes or whatever, right? Now, Angela's sister, Donna Faye, she tells Angela, like, I feel like he's playing you. As soon as Tony come out, goddamn Angela gonna put her sister on the spot like that, even though she claims she wasn't trying to start no shit. She put her sister on the spot. She was like, Donna thinks that you're playing me and, and I ain't trying to start no, but I want us to all be on the same page. Now, he claims he's he not playing her, although he does say he's a hustler. He claims that he's not hustling Angela, right? Donna Faye, like, look here. You did something to my sister. You run away again. You better run away and don't bring your ass back or I'm gonna be on your ass like flies on shit. Y'all, she not playing either. Y'all, so later on, Tony ends up calling Angela and telling Angela to meet him at the park. There's something important going on. He needs to talk to her. Child, she gets to the park and he's done this little romantical picnic or whatever type shit in the park. He ends up proposing to her. Gives her a ring and proposes to her. Now, he ain't got no job, so I'm sure that was some money that she provided for him, so she bought her own damn engagement ring. <laughs> hey, it is what it is. He proposed to her. Of course, she's like, oh my God. You are so sweet, Tony. Oh, my God. She's in love. Everything that he done did is out the window. She's in love. That's all that matters. Now, he does say that the fact that she is so in love with him, he knows that he has control over her because of that, right? I said, oh, see. Soon as he said that, I knew it was some fuck shit coming right after that. And sure as shit stink, this is what the hell happened. So, it's the next day. She may, I don't know if it's the next day, later on, whenever the hell it is. She making sandwiches for his ass like he in grade school or something because he finna go to therapy. Now, was he going to work or something after that? Was it therapy camp? Did he have something to do afterwards? Why is he packing this man lunch to go to therapy? I ain't get that at all. I'm hoping he went to, to a school or something afterwards while you got your mama packing your lunch like that. I, I didn't get that at all. But she packs his lunch. He goes to the before he goes to therapy, she's like, what are some of the things that y'all talk about in therapy? Like, what you gonna do? I think she finna go with him. He's like, mm, it's confidential. I can't really say. So they tongue each other down, baby. He gets in the car. He rolls out. He gets to the old hotel that he used to work at. He said he gotta make a real quick stop because he gotta see some folk, right? But before he gets out the car, he tells him that this is the end of the road for you, cameraman. Look here. They got a strict policy about cameras in there and we just can't have you coming up in there. I'm gonna need to stay in the car. Chai, he goes, gets out the car, go knocks on the hotel room door. It's some chick up in there. It could have been Amy, the one little bad one from the last time. Or it could have been Michelle, who he had saved in his phone. It's Michael. We don't know. But baby, the fool still had his mic on. And just like some old cheater shit, Angela calls him. I don't know if y'all ever seen that old show, Cheaters, where they he's catching these folks out there that's cheating. They got surveillance cameras and all of that. Child, she calls him. He talking about, hey, she's like, how's therapy going? Oh, it's going great. I'm learning a lot. Now, first of all, I've taken therapy, therapy before. You don't answer your goddamn phone in the middle of a session like that. Angela, that's where you should have known it right there that the fool is lying. He's saying that he's having a good time in therapy. Oh, everything is going great. Everything is going awesome. I'll talk to you later when I get home. whoop de whoop yada, yada, yada. As soon as he hang up the phone, he like, oh, God damn. You can hear a chick laughing in the background. I said, oh, no, ma'am. Oh, no, ma'am. Update on them. They're still together, but I cannot wait to see 
life after lockup. Because baby, she ends up getting the SIM card out of his phone and putting it in her phone. And that's when she ends up finding everything. And I am here for it. I can't wait to see it. I think it comes back with um, January 3rd. Mm-hmm. I'm going to be here for it. Marietta and Alex. Y'all, like we didn't see this shit coming. Okay, so... Glorietta is at the house with her mama and she's showing her mama this little, you know, that little wedding book, that old crazy stalkerish ass <laughs> wedding album that she put together with her and Alex, right? And so mama is asking, how is everything going on with their relationship? Is everything going good? Glorietta, of course, tells her about um when she was at the car show and how Alex came in there at the car show tripping or whatever, right? So mama was like, so where is he at now? Are, like, are y'all on good terms? Like, what's going on? So Glorietta was saying how he came in there tripping, like, you know, asking her, do you love me and why do you want to marry me? Now mama's calling the bullshit. She already sees it. She's like, well, maybe he wanted to break up. Like, why would he come in there and be asking you, why do you love him? Like, you want to marry him. That's enough right there. You there with him. You've been sticking it out with him. That's enough of a reason right there. Why would he continue to ask you that, right? Now, at the same time that Glorietta is talking with her mama, we got Alex over here with Juliana in the park. He done bought her a gift of their old high school yearbook, trying to get that old thing back, right? So they looking at pictures in the yearbook. They reminiscing about um, how he was bad as hell, how he was trying to get her to skip school all the time. And you know what I'm saying? Just reminiscing on some old shit, right? Now, Glorietta's mama is asking Glorietta, like, where the hell is Alex at now? She was like, I don't know. I haven't talked to Alex in, in a while, but, you know, all couples go through things. And, you know, she sound like a ditzy-ass Snow White or something. All couples go through things, but we should be all right. But hopefully, you know, we can really work it out. She's kind of delusional a little bit. Sweet girl, beautiful woman, but she's kind of delusional a little bit. I was like, damn, no. So mama said, where he at right now? You know what I'm saying? We can go ride out on his ass. Now, Glorietta says that he's been over there at Cato House because, you know, that's where he's been staying. So mama said, well, come on. If he's real, man, we can put his ass to the fire right now. We can see what the hell is going on. Glorietta claims she wants to go because she wants to prove her mama wrong. No, baby, you want to make sure that your mama ain't right. So Glorietta and her mama get up in that damn car and they saddle out and they ride. This whole time, Alex ass in a park with damn Juliana singing these whack ass songs. Oh girl, the distance between us. Oh yeah, these are whack ass damn songs that he sings. And goddamn Juliana was like, "Is that some shit that you wrote for Glorietta?" He was like, "Yeah, matter of fact, it was." Uh, girl, why won't you tell him that that shit is whack? You know it is. So child, they end up going over to Kato's shop. They go back uh, around the back and knock on the trailer that um, what's his name? Alex stays in when he's over there. Ain't nobody in the trailer. So she goes inside the shop. She don't see Kato, but she does see his wife, Dawn. She talks to Dawn. It's like, hey, have you talked to Alex? I'm trying to get a hold of him. Like, I don't know where he is. What's going on? She's like, no, I don't know where he is, but I can call him. She calls Alex. He doesn't answer his phone and go straight to voicemail. But child, not even a few seconds later, he ends up calling her back. She answers the phone and she's like, hey, you know, what's up? Where you at? He's like, oh, I'm on my way to your house right now. She was like, oh, you're on your way to my house? He's like, yeah, who is this? Now, Right then and there, what you gonna say you on your way to the house for? But you gonna ask who this is? Like, he's so doggone full of shit. She's like, uh, this is Don. He's like, oh, yeah, what's up? I'm on my way to, I think he said, like, the Limelight Cafe or something like that. She said, you caught his ass in the line right there. Then Don is like, well, your girl, you know, she looking for you. He was like, my girl? Who was my girl? She's like, Glorietta. She been looking for you. This fool, Alex, gonna say she might think she my girl, but she ain't my girl. I was like, oh, damn, oh, word? Now, Glorietta, she a better bitch than me because I'd have snapped right then and there. Now, she had him on speakerphone. I understand she was trying to be quiet. She'd get all the juice. But see, that's why I fuck up because I would have slipped up and said something like, oh, I ain't your girl. You wait till I see you. I'm going to put these paws on your ass. But you know what I'm saying? She was like, okay, cool. Well, um... I just want to let you know that your girl was still looking for you, this, that, and the other. You know, I'll holla at you later. So soon as she hang up the phone, Don was like, well, there you go right there. He said he on his way to this cafe right there. <laughs> Don probably was like, bitch, if I was you, I'd go up there and ride out on his ass. So, of course, girl, you had to go outside. She tell her mama what happened. Mama ready to go. TTG all day. Let's ride out. Let's kill them fools. Mama ready to go. Glorietta fired up now. Because, you know, now she got Dawn in the ear too. Like, okay, well, you know what I'm saying? I'm finna have to go get his ass now. Y'all, so they get to the restaurant. Alex is sitting there at the table with Juliana. 
Glorietta walks up like, hey, what's going on? How y'all doing? Okay, so you on a date? He's like, yeah, I'm on a date. As a matter of fact, I am. She was like, okay, is this why you haven't been calling me back? Now, mind you, Glorietta is respectful. She's like, well, you know, you haven't been calling you. She's like, hi, who are you? And um, Juliana's like, I'm Juliana. She was like, hi, I'm Glorietta. Did he tell you that he was engaged? Juliana's like, yes, as a matter of fact, he did. And she was, and then next thing you know, this fool, Alex, starts going in. He's like, um... Look here, you know, this is a perfect time to tell you right now, you know what I'm saying, this ain't gonna work, man, you can't be together, so you, know, you can get the fuck out, you can bounce. Now, mind you, this whole time, she's like, look here, you know, me and you, we could have talked, you could have told me if this is not what you wanted, we could have, you know, separated, been on terms, and yada, yada, yada. He the one turned left, and the shit got goddamn ugly, baby. Next thing you know, mama came out the woodwork, she was like, look here, don't you talk to my damn daughter like that, baby, mama picked up a cup, through that water or whatever the hell it was, she started picking up all kind of shit. <laughs> picking up plates of food and everything. This fool, Alex, picks up a cup and a drink and throws it right back on mama. Child, this whole time, Juliana in the cut, looking and laughing like, what in the fuck is going on here? So y'all, finally, security ends up coming. They end up breaking everything up. They take Gloria and her mama on up out of there. The owner was like, hell no. Not up in my goddamn restaurant. <laughs> they coming in here with this old ratchet ass shit. Child, when they took them out, Juliana is sitting down at the table with Alex. She was like, look here. This ain't what I signed up for. You told me that you was going to let that girl know what's going on. Matter of fact, you made it seem like it wasn't that damn serious. This ain't what I signed up for. Now, I'm proud of Juliana. And she stuck to that. She was like, look here. Uh-uh. This ain't the kind of drama I want. I went through rehab so I can learn to get away from drama like this. And motherfucker, I'm not going to do it with your goddamn ass. So, on the update, she stuck to her guns. She ain't with Alex. Goddamn Alex's ass is back in jail for multiple felonies. You just ain't gonna goddamn learn. And neither will Glorietta. Cause child, she's still out here dating goddamn inmates on catchakiller.com. Child, she just can't get it together. She can't get right. Lacey, John, and Shane, y'all. Lord have mercy. So she talking with her daddy. She says she got the DNA results, but she wants to wait until she's with John so that she can give him the DNA results, right? Now, she also didn't tell her daddy that she invited John to come up there because she claims that he's been wanting to see the kids. Daddy like, what the hell is, what is wrong with you, girl? Why would you do that? I was thinking the same damn thing. Like, girl, what is wrong with you? So fast forward, they on the beach, right? Lacey, her dad, and the kids. John ends up showing up. Now, John and Lacey's daddy, they don't get along. I didn't know it was this bad. Soon as he gets there, like, you know, John speak, they say, what's up? It's awkward as hell. Even the kids, it was just really awkward with everybody, right? Kids go back down, start playing in the goddamn sand. Daddy like, okay, so what she been up to? And he's saying, you know, this, that, and the other. I just got out, whoop de whoop Then he asked John, so how do you feel about Lacey getting married? You know, she's going to get married. That piss John off. John look at goddamn Lacey. Daddy's like, fuck you. He was like, fuck you. Child, they start arguing, but they, they quietly arguing because they know the kids is right there. It was crazy. <laughs> I was like, what in the redneck is going on? Child, they kind of arguing, and John is like giving it to Daddy. Daddy giving it right back to me. Like, what's up, John? Like, what's up, motherfucker? We can do this right here all day, every day. You know what I'm saying? It is what it is. Daddy like, bitch, I ain't with shits. You know what I'm saying? I can be with shit shits, but I ain't with shits. You know what I'm saying? It is what it is. John like, bitch, it is what it is. They arguing just like this because they don't want to get too righty, although the kids are right there. Kids are listening to every goddamn thing that's going on. Lacey eventually had to like push John out of there. Then John says something to Lacey's daddy, like cussing him out again. Lacey ends up smacking the shit out of John. John tells her, you smack me again, I'm going to knock you the fuck out. That would have been my cue to exit stage. Goddamn left, and I'd have been the hell on up out of there. And Lacey gets back up in his face like, you wish you what? I would call you probation officer. You know how she do. She loves to threaten a nigga with the goddamn probation officer. Loves to do that. So she gets back to the crib. Shane is there. She tells Shane what happened. Now the kids end up leaving and going with her daddy back on over to his house. She gets up and she gets back and she tells Shane, you know, everything that happened. Of course, Shane, he pissed off now. He like, you should have called me. I came now. I'd have ride out on that food and said the other. Now, because she's pissed off at John because he acted fool at the beach, now she's hoping that he's not the father. When at first, you hope that he was the father. Girl, she's so goddamn wishy-washy with the shits. So she tells Shane that, you know what I'm 
I'm saying? She had invited him up because he wanted to see the kids. Once again, she's withholding sh holding shit from Shane. Even though you're not necessarily lying to him, but you're not telling him the whole and complete truth to everything. Shane, that should be your cue right there. Don't marry this chick. Goddamn, hello. But she tells him that she got the paternity test results. She wanted to open them up with John originally, but John pissed her off. She ended up, you know, opening up the results. Lucky for her, John is not the father of her son, Marlo. They are both happy. They're both ecstatic now. And I think the reason why Lacey is really happy is because now she don't have to feel guilty about being with Shane and marrying Shane when this whole time she was making this commitment to John. So... I see straight through your bullshit, Lacey. I see straight through it. Y'all, so it's the morning of the wedding. They're having a, a beach wedding. You know, Lacey's dad is kicking it with Shane and his people in them. I guess now he accepts Shane because he ends up walking Lacey down the aisle. It was a beautiful ceremony that they have. And you know what? It's plastic and as crazy as Lacey looks, I have to give it to her. She looked beautiful. Her makeup was beautiful. Her dress would look good on her. I, th I thought she looked really, really good for Lacey. We know how Lacey can be, but for Lacey, she looked really, really good. They exchanged some beautiful vows to one another. And so, you know, they got married. Now, she did call John before she walked down the aisle, and she told John that she got the paternity test results back and that he is not the father. She then tells him, um, I'm getting ready to walk down the aisle right now. I'm like, are you okay? She likes to, again, push at his goddamn buttons because she knows that he, I think she likes that he gets jealous and violent over her. That's probably like a big ass turn on for her, right? Which I'm sure that shit on the beach, they probably did something to her down there. I'm just saying. So she tells him that, you know, she's going to get ready to get married and please don't come trying to crash my wedding or anything like that because he was threatening that he was going to ca uh, crash the wedding. But I'm sure the producer's like, oh, hell no, you finna sit your goddamn crazy white ass right down here in this car and smoke as many cigarettes as you need to because we ain't got time for this goddamn shit. It ain't in the budget or the goddamn insurance. So they end up getting married. Update says that they're still together and that they are working on more kids. Lacey, no ma'am. No ma'am. No ma'am. Work on your life. Don't work on no more goddamn kids. Listen to your auntie because that's what your auntie had said. Um, but y'all, the episode ended from there. That was the season finale. Um, this episode was good. It was like an hour and a half, goddamn long. Hopefully, I didn't make this review too too long. It's right at a good little mark for me. But if it was anything that I missed, y'all already know, drop it down below and let me know. Please don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and share. Say a little prayer for your auntie because I am not feeling good at all. And Auntie Mo will see y'all in the next video. Peace out. What's up, y'all? Do me a favor and share the video. Please make sure to subscribe to my channel. Let me know what you think and um, hit that notification button so you will be up to date when I upload my latest videos. Ahala.